Section. Introduction. In this section, we discuss the advancements and challenges of large language models, LLMs, in natural language processing. We highlight that models like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini have shown impressive abilities, yet they still struggle with complex reasoning tasks, particularly in mathematical problem solving. To improve their performance, recent research suggests using external tools such as calculators and symbolic solvers alongside LLMs. By combining natural language reasoning with these tools, we can enhance the model's ability to solve mathematical problems effectively. We pose a key research question. How can we train LLMs to better integrate tool usage with their inherent reasoning skills for complex tasks? Current approaches mainly focus on generating synthetic data and supervised fine-tuning, which have led to notable improvements in accuracy on benchmarks like MATH and GSM-8K. Reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, has emerged as a crucial technique for refining LLMs post-training, allowing them to align more closely with human preferences. Inspired by the success of RLHF in general chat applications, we aim to explore its application in enhancing ILM's mathematical problem-solving skills when they utilize external tools. Given that deep reinforcement learning methods can be inefficient and unstable, we seek to develop direct preference learning algorithms that learn from preference datasets. We start by framing our learning process as a Markov decision process, MDP, which differs from the contextual bandit approach typically used in RLHF. We derive the optimal conditions for our optimization problem and create multi-turn direct alignment algorithms that incorporate external messages, focusing on masking irrelevant tokens during training. We also adapt our approach to online iterative variants, which have shown promise in recent studies. To evaluate our methods, we conduct case studies using augmented training sets from MATH and GSM-8K, testing various base models. Our results show significant performance improvements, indicating the effectiveness of RLHF in complex reasoning tasks. We also provide a detailed guide for implementing our online iterative multi-turn methods and make our models, datasets, and code available for further research. In our problem formulation, we define prompts and assume interactions can last for several rounds. We sample an initial prompt and observe the agent's actions and the environment's responses over multiple steps, ultimately collecting a trajectory of interactions. This MDP framework allows us to analyze the learning process distinctly from traditional models. We also introduce the Bradley-Terry model to generate preference signals based on trajectory comparisons. This model helps us understand how one response is preferred over another based on a utility function. We provide examples of how to define this utility function in the context of mathematical reasoning, including methods for checking final answers and using outcome-supervised reward models. Overall, we aim to enhance ILM's reasoning capabilities through structured learning processes and effective integration of external tools, paving the way for improved performance in complex tasks. Section Summary In this section, we discuss the limitations of large language models, LLMs, in complex reasoning tasks, particularly in mathematical problem solving, and propose integrating external tools to enhance their capabilities. We introduce a novel approach using reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, to improve ILM's performance by formulating the learning process as a Markov decision process, MDP, and developing multi turn direct alignment algorithms that leverage external messages. Section Related Work in this section, we discuss the related work on using large language models, LLMs, for solving mathematical problems. A number of studies have suggested prompting LLMs to tackle complex reasoning tasks step by step, a method known as chain of thought, caught, prompting. However, we find that LLMs often struggle with basic arithmetic and symbolic manipulations when relying only on their internal knowledge and natural language reasoning. To address these challenges, Researchers have looked into using external tools like calculators, symbolic solvers, and code interpreters to improve ILM's problem-solving skills. One effective approach is the program-based method, POT, which involves writing code to perform COT reasoning and using the code's output as the answer. 
This method has shown better results than traditional COT techniques in math problem solving, although it still faces issues with planning and error handling, where natural language reasoning might be more effective. We also note that tool-integrated reasoning combines natural language reasoning with external tools, leading to significant advancements in recent studies. While much of this work has focused on generating synthetic data for tool-integrated reasoning, our goal is to enhance the performance of these LLMs using reinforcement learning from Human Feedback RLHF. Regarding RLHF, we observe that the main method used is deep reinforcement learning, particularly the Proximal Policy Optimization PPO, algorithm, which has been successful in models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. However, implementing PPO can be resource-intensive, often exceeding what is feasible for open-source projects. As a result, alternative methods have emerged, such as RAFT, reward-ranked fine-tuning, which has been adapted for tasks like machine translation and math problem-solving. Other direct preference learning algorithms have also been developed, which optimize loss objectives directly on preference datasets, avoiding the reward modeling step. We highlight that while many algorithms have been designed for single-turn interactions, there is limited exploration of multi-turn scenarios. One recent study has begun to address multi-turn tasks under general preferences, but our focus is on applying RLHF to multi-turn tasks that involve interactions with external tools. In terms of math problem solving, we see that algorithms used in general chatbots have been adapted to improve ILM's reasoning abilities in this context. For example, RAFT is widely used for generating synthetic data and the reward signals typically come from checking final results or using outcome-supervised reward models, ORMs. A new approach, Process Supervised Reward Models, PRMs, offers feedback at each step of the reasoning process, showing improvements over ORMs when combined with rejection sampling. We also note that the GRPO algorithm has been developed for multi-turn math problem solving, focusing on the COT format without external inputs. Recent studies have explored generating proxy labels for intermediate reasoning steps, using techniques like Monte Carlo Tree Search MCTS, to enhance the learning process. In summary, we recognize various methods for collecting preference data and applying direct preference learning algorithms. Our work differs by focusing on trajectory-level comparisons and introducing a multi-turn DPO framework specifically for tool-integrated mathematical problem-solving. We also mention that while we concentrate on trajectory-level comparisons, our method can adapt to learn step-level signals when available. We plan to explore combining our algorithmic design with MCTS-based data collection strategies in future work. Section Summary In this section, we review advancements in using large language models, LLMs, for mathematical problem-solving, highlighting the effectiveness of chain-of-thought prompting and the program-based method which outperforms traditional techniques. We also discuss the evolution of reinforcement learning from human feedback RLHF, algorithms, particularly in multi-turn interactions with external tools, and propose a novel approach focusing on trajectory-level preference learning for enhanced mathematical reasoning. Section. Algorithms Development. In this section, we develop the main algorithms of our paper. We address the general formulation of Markov decision processes, MDPs, discussed earlier, which includes the specific case of tool-integrated mathematical reasoning. This means our algorithms can also be applied to broader situations involving external messages. First, we establish the link between any model, defined by its states, actions, horizon, transition probabilities, initial distribution, and utility function, and its optimal policy. We focus on a KL regularized planning problem relative to a reference policy. In the simplest case, where we only have one step and no transitions, we find that the optimal solution can be expressed as a Gibbs distribution, which relates the reference policy to the utility function. When we move to a multi-step scenario, we still consider the Gibbs distribution but apply dynamic programming. For instance, in the case of two steps, where the model can use the tool once, our goal is to maximize a specific target. We start from the last step and work backward. By fixing the state at the second step, we can determine the optimal policy for that step using the utility function. Next, 
we define the value associated with this policy and then address the optimization problem for the first step. We observe that the policies we derive for each step maximize the KL regularized target. For a general MDP with multiple steps, we can repeat this process, starting with a value of zero for the step beyond our horizon and recursively defining the Q values based on the utility function and the values from the next step. Ultimately, we derive the optimal policy by solving a series of Gibbs distributions based on these Q values. Section Summary In this section, we develop algorithms for a general Markov decision process, MDP, formulation, which includes a specific case of tool-integrated mathematical reasoning. We establish a connection between the model and its optimal policy, demonstrating that the optimal solutions can be derived using Gibbs distributions through a dynamic programming approach across multiple planning steps. Section. Planning with a fixed model, practical algorithm. In this section, we explore planning with a fixed model using a practical algorithm. While we can solve this approximately with standard deep reinforcement learning methods, we focus on implementing it through direct preference learning techniques like SLIC, DPO, or IPO. Previous attempts have treated the completion as a meta-action and incorporated it into the single-step DPO loss, essentially treating external messages as regular texts generated by the model. Another approach is to include the probability of the trajectory in the single-step DPO loss. Specifically, for a pair consisting of an input and two trajectories, where one is preferred, we can express the loss in terms of the log of the ratio of probabilities. However, this method does not always yield the optimal policy, as we will explain. We can calculate the Q values using a specific formula that relates to the optimal policy and the value function. By defining the Q values, we can express them in terms of expected values. When we sum over all steps, we derive a term that includes the log of the probability ratio and the value function for the next step. We note that one term in this expression is similar to a term from the single-step DPO derivation, while another term can be cancelled out when comparing rewards of two trajectories with the same input. Unfortunately, directly computing one of these terms is often impractical. Using Chebyshev's inequality, we find that this term is related to the randomness of the environment. However, in our focus on tool-integrated large language models for mathematical reasoning, the results are determined by the history of code execution, making this term zero. Thus, with a dataset consisting of input-output pairs, we can adopt a multi-turn DPO loss. We emphasize that while this loss appears similar to previous formulations, we provide a rigorous derivation process. This multi-turn DPO loss is valid only under deterministic transitions. Moreover, with deterministic transitions, we can derive an implicit reward and a multi-turn version of KTO. We also note that we have developed an online iterative version of KTO for reasoning tasks, which we extend to create a tool-integrated reasoning agent. Our discussions on MDPO and MKTO losses focus on deterministic observations due to the nature of tool-integrated LLMs. In contrast, other applications may involve stochastic observations, such as multi-turn chats with human or LLM inputs. In these cases, the previous methods may be biased and not yield optimal policies. Instead, we should first build a value network based on Bellman equations and estimate the problematic term using Monte Carlo methods, which can then adaptively inform preference training. We recognize that the MDP formulation and related discussions have been previously explored in the context of single-turn tasks. Although the mathematical formulations may seem similar, our primary focus is on tool-integrated reasoning tasks that involve additional external messages. Section Summary In this section, we explore a practical algorithm for planning with a fixed model using direct preference learning methods like MDPO and MKTO emphasizing their application in deterministic environments typical of tool-integrated LLMs for mathematical reasoning. We highlight the challenges of computing certain bias terms in stochastic settings and propose future research directions for adapting these algorithms to more complex multi-turn learning scenarios. Section, Task, and Datasets In this section, 
we evaluate our model's ability to solve mathematical problems using the test sets from the MATH and GSM-8K datasets. The MATH dataset contains 5,000 problems from various areas of mathematics, including algebra, geometry, probability, number theory, and calculus. In contrast, the GSM-8K test set has 1,319 simpler grade school math word problems. For example, a GSM-8K problem asks how many clips Natalia sold in total after selling 48 in April and half that amount in May. A math problem requires finding the center of a circle given its equation. To solve these problems, our model must engage in multi-turn reasoning and perform arithmetic operations. To create our training prompt set, we utilize an augmented set derived from 7,500 training problems from math and 7,470 from GSM-8K, following established methods. We incorporate prompts from MetaMath QA and MMIQC, including rephrased questions, backward questions that start with the final answer, and bootstrapping questions through in-context learning. We remove duplicate questions and ensure that none from the test sets are included. Ultimately, we compile 60,000 training prompts, which we randomly divide into three separate sets for iterative training, while reserving 1,000 prompts for model selection. We train several base models, including GEMMA 1.1 IT 7B, CODE GEMMA 1.1 IT 7B, Mistral 7B V 0.3, and Gemma 2 IT 9B. We choose to fine-tune the pre-trained version of Mistral due to inconsistencies in the chat templates across different code bases. For data formatting and generation, we structure the data into a multi-turn chat format where the user asks a question, and the model responds based on previous interactions. The model can provide a final answer or call a Python interpreter to execute code. We generate 30 samples per prompt for each iteration, using a temperature setting of 1.0 and a mixture sampling strategy to enhance diversity. We impose constraints on the number of tokens generated and the maximum number of steps. In the supervised fine-tuning phase, we focus on tool-integrated reasoning tasks using a subset of the Open Math Instruct dataset, which we generated from the Math and GSM-8K training sets. We limit the number of samples per question to 50 and remove nearly duplicate responses, resulting in 510,000 samples. We train the models for up to four epochs with specific learning rates, using a cosine learning rate scheduler and masking user messages during training. The training process takes approximately 10 to 15 hours on powerful GPUs, and we select checkpoints from the best performing epochs for further training. An ablation study on the SFT epochs is also included. Section Summary In this section, we describe our approach to evaluating model performance on mathematical problem solving using the MATH and GSM-8K datasets, which include diverse problems and simpler grade school questions, respectively. We detail our training process, which involves generating a large set of prompts for multi-turn reasoning, employing various base models, and conducting supervised fine-tuning with a focus on tool-integrated reasoning tasks. Section. Data Annotation. In this section, we focus on data annotation. For each prompt, we first categorize the responses into a winning set and a losing set by examining the final answer. We notice that the model can sometimes memorize the final answer, even if the reasoning is flawed. To address this, we implement a heuristic filtering process. We remove any trajectories from the winning set where the second to last messages indicate bugs, but the model still predicts the correct answer. We also discard any responses from both sets that exceed 2048 tokens. Next, we randomly select one trajectory from the winning set and one from the losing set to create a pair for the training set of the KTO algorithm. Typically, we gather 15,000 to 20,000 samples per iteration, as some prompts may not yield correct answers. We see potential in using AI feedback, like Gemini or GPT-4, to verify the correctness of each step or to rank the trajectories, which we plan to explore in future work. For the implementation of MDPO and MKTO, we label all user turn tokens as negative 100 and mask the log probability during loss computation. We train the model for a maximum of one epoch and adjust the learning rate from a set of values. 
Ultimately, we use a learning rate of 4 times 10 to the power of negative 7 for the GEMMA 1.1 models and 2 times 10 to the power of negative 7 for the GEMMA 2 and Mistral models. The global batch size is set to 32 with a warm-up step of 40. We evaluate the model every 50 training steps using a split prompt set, typically achieving the best model between 150 and 600 steps. This is expected since the prompts for supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning from human feedback overlap, a trend noted in previous research. We also plan to investigate prompt scaling in future work. The hyperparameters for MKTO are mostly consistent with those of MDPO, and we set the parameters for positive and negative rewards to 1, as per the original KTO paper. Our RLHF experiments utilize 8A180G GPUs, with an additional machine of 8A140G GPUs for data collection and model evaluation. The main experiment can be reproduced in 24 to 48 hours with this setup and we provide further implementation details in the appendix due to space limitations. We evaluate the models in a zero-shot setting and present the main results in a table. The existing literature primarily emphasizes synthetic data generation and training models to use external tools through supervised fine-tuning on collected data. We use results from this literature as baselines since we employ the same supervised fine-tuning dataset, making the results generally comparable. For the chain of thought baselines, we utilize the wizard math models. We also include reward ranked fine tuning, RAFT, as a baseline, which is known as rejection sampling fine tuning. RAFT collects multiple trajectories per prompt, filters out low quality data based on a reward function, and fine tunes on the selected trajectories. Another baseline is the single turn online iterative DPO and KTO which overlooks the problem structure and treats the trajectory as a whole, meaning we do not mask the user turn, and external message tokens contribute to the loss. From the initial sections of the table, we observe that tool-integrated large language models significantly outperform their chain-of-thought counterparts that rely solely on supervised fine-tuning, highlighting the advantages of using external tools. In our discussions, we concentrate on comparisons within the realm of tool-integrated large language models. We find that iterative MDPO and MKTO greatly enhance the supervised fine-tuning models. For all four base models, after iterative training with MDPO or MKTO, the resulting models show substantial improvements over their initial supervised fine-tuning checkpoints on both GSM-8K and MATH. Specifically, the aligned GEMMA 1.1 its 7B model achieves accuracies of 83.9% and 51.2% on GSM 8K and MATH, respectively, which is comparable to the open source Open Math Instruct fine tuned code LLAMA 2 to 70B model. Additionally, the aligned GEMMA 2 it 9B model reaches accuracies of 86.3% and 54.5% on GSM 8K and MATH surpassing all open source models trained with open math instruct in the 7b to 70b range overall our framework effectively enhances the capabilities of tool integrated models beyond what is achieved through supervised fine tuning section summary in this section we describe our data annotation process where we filter responses based on correctness and length to create training pairs for the kto algorithm ultimately generating 15 k to 0 k samples per iteration. We also detail the implementation of MDPO and MKTO, highlighting their effectiveness in improving model performance on tasks like GSM 8K and math, with our models achieving competitive accuracies compared to existing open source models. Section. Iterative MDPO and MKTO surpass existing RLHF baselines. In this section, we demonstrate that our iterative MDPO and MKTO methods outperform existing RLHF baselines. We consistently see that these methods exceed the performance of the RAFT algorithm across all four base models, which is recognized as a strong baseline. The RAFT algorithm relies solely on positive signals by mimicking correct paths, while our DPO and KTO methods also utilize negative signals from incorrect paths. We consider the SFT stage in our process as a form of raft, 
suggesting that algorithms using negative signals are more efficient in terms of samples. Additionally, we find that the online iterative single turn DPO KTO, improves performance but is generally less effective than the multi turn version. This indicates that predicting off policy messages from the code interpreter can negatively affect reasoning skills. We illustrate this with an example where LLMs produce poorly structured code, leading to confusing and lengthy messages. Training LLMs to predict these messages can harm their reasoning abilities. We also observe that iterative training and updating references enhance performance. Using the GEMMA 1.1, its 7B and MDPO as examples, we see improvements in test accuracy for GSM 8K and math with each iteration. This aligns with our understanding that iterative training helps models explore and learn optimal policies over time. When we keep the reference model fixed as the SFT policy, the final performance is significantly lower than when we update the reference model at each iteration. We believe this is because the algorithm optimizes non-regularized rewards, which are more accurate in mathematical reasoning tasks than in general chat tasks. Next, we analyze preference learning, noting that it only improves pass at n accuracy when the number of candidate trajectories is small. We find that when the number exceeds 16, all models perform similarly on both GSM 8K and math. This suggests that iterative MDPO does not introduce new knowledge but enhances the quality of the top responses based on pre-training and SFT knowledge. We anticipate that final model performance could improve with more high-quality SFT data. In our ablation study, we explore the impact of KL regularization. We find that a moderate KL coefficient balances improvement and exploration efficiency. Our results show that updating the reference model at each iteration leads to significantly better performance than using a fixed reference model. This dynamic approach focuses on optimizing non-regularized rewards, while the fixed model aims for KL regularized rewards, highlighting a trade-off between diversity and reward optimization. We discover that a KL coefficient of 0.1 yields the best results, outperforming both lower and higher coefficients. Initially, smaller KL coefficients lead to greater improvements, but models trained with very low coefficients lose diversity, which can hinder their ability to gather varied trajectories for future training. Conversely, a high KL coefficient imposes strong regularization, resulting in less improvement. Overall, we conclude that for online iterative training, we must balance per iteration improvements with exploration efficiency to optimize performance a principle that also applies to our sampling strategies and other experimental methods. Section Summary In this section, we demonstrate that our iterative MDPO and MKTO algorithms significantly outperform existing RLHF baselines, particularly the RAFT algorithm, by effectively utilizing both positive and negative signals from trajectories. We also find that iterative training enhances model performance, with optimal results achieved by dynamically updating the reference model and employing a moderate KL regularization coefficient, balancing exploration and reward optimization. Section. The impact of sampling strategy, data diversity and coverage are crucial. In this section, we examine the influence of our sampling strategy on data diversity and coverage, which are essential for effective training. During our iterative training of the GEMMA 1.1 its 7B model, we noted a consistent rise in the accuracy of correct trajectories, increasing from 47% in the first iteration to 76% in the last. As we updated the reference model with each iteration, we found that the diversity of generated trajectories decreased quickly. However, having diverse data is vital for training methods like DPO and KTO which rely on contrasting examples. Previous research suggests using different model variations with varying sampling temperatures or training steps to boost trajectory diversity. To explore this, we tested two data collection methods. One, on policy sampling, where all trajectories come from the current policy, and two, mixture sampling, which combines 20 trajectories from the current model and 10 from the previous iteration's model. Our results, shown in a table, indicate that mixture sampling significantly outperformed on policy sampling. 
We also plotted math test accuracy against iterations and found that on policy sampling did not improve accuracy in the third iteration, while mixture sampling led to substantial gains. This reinforces the idea that diverse responses are crucial in iterative training and aligns with earlier findings that advanced exploration strategies help maintain diversity and provide better signals for learning preferences. We also collected a set number of trajectories per prompt to ensure we had both correct and incorrect reasoning paths for comparison. A larger number of trajectories generally improved coverage, especially for complex problems. For example, with 30 trajectories, we covered 92.5% of prompts, compared to 83.0% with 12 and 60% with 6. However, increasing the number of trajectories also raised computational costs. We conducted an ablation study with different trajectory counts and summarized our findings in a table. We observed a significant performance increase when moving from 6 to 12 trajectories, indicating better coverage for complex problems. However, the improvement from 12 to 30 was minimal, suggesting diminishing returns for increasing the number of trajectories. We found that the best model emerged from fine-tuning the starting checkpoint for more than one epoch. Previous studies indicated that training the SFT model for over one epoch could lead to performance declines in DPO training regarding instruction following and general chatbot benchmarks. This suggests a trade-off between the number of SFT training epochs and DPO training steps. Our ablation study on SFT epochs showed consistent improvements in model performance with iterative MDPO training compared to the SFT model. We also noted a similar trade-off between SFT and RLHF training, where more SFT epochs reduced gains from RLHF. Interestingly, our strongest model resulted from three SFT epochs followed by iterative MDPO fine-tuning, differing from the one-epoch SFT approach used in other studies. We also explored the role of negative log likelihood NLL, loss, particularly in enhancing chain-of-thought capabilities for solving math problems. The NLL loss was added to our iterative MDPO training, but we observed performance regression. The best model was achieved in the second iteration with NLL loss, even with mixture sampling to boost data diversity. Using a time-weighted exponential moving average for smoothing, we noted the log probabilities of chosen and rejected responses were better with NLL loss, indicating it may contribute to model distribution collapse and hurt overall performance. Finally, we recognized that the NLL loss could be seen as an application of the pessimistic principle, which might explain its poorer in-domain performance despite potentially stabilizing training. To further investigate, we fine-tuned the GEMMA 1.1 its 7B with just 100 steps to ensure it could utilize Python code effectively. In this case, we found that adding NLL loss improved performance when the SFT model was underfitting, aligning with previous findings that suggest RLHF is less effective without initial SFT. Section Summary In this section, we highlight the importance of data diversity and coverage in our iterative training of the GEMMA 1.1 its 7B model, noting that using mixture sampling significantly improved performance compared to on-policy sampling. We also discuss the trade-offs between the number of sampling trajectories and training epochs, revealing that while increasing the number of trajectories enhances coverage, the benefits diminish at higher values, and that the addition of negative log likelihood loss can negatively impact model performance unless the model is underfitting. Section On Policy Sampling and Small Learning Rate Mitigate the Probability Drops in Preferred Responses In this section, we discuss how on-policy sampling and a small learning rate help reduce the drops in the likelihood of preferred responses. Previous studies have shown that the Direct Preference Optimization DPO, algorithm can weaken reasoning abilities by lowering the chances of preferred responses. In our initial experiments, we noticed similar issues with a high learning rate, where the model's reasoning skills deteriorated quickly, hindering its ability to improve. However, we found that using on-policy sampling in our online training approach, along with a smaller learning rate, actually boosts the model's reasoning capabilities. To explain our findings, we can express the gradient of the DPO algorithm in simpler terms. 
The implicit reward is based on the ratio of the model's response probability to a reference probability. Typically, the likelihood of rejected responses decreases, and their gradient can overpower the chosen responses when the probability of the chosen response is much lower. This leads to a situation where the model unlearns the rejected responses, preventing any increase in the probability of the chosen ones. When we implement on policy sampling, it allows for a higher probability for both rejected and chosen responses at the beginning, keeping both gradients effective. Additionally, a small learning rate helps the model stay on track, preserving the usefulness of both gradients. We also observe that in the KTO algorithm, preferred and rejected responses do not always occur together. We believe that the likelihood of preferred responses increases because the gradients from rejected responses do not dominate in every mini-batch. Understanding the training dynamics of direct preference learning algorithms is still an open question, and we plan to explore this further in future research.